Hi, I'm Aida Diaz Lechelento, the Clinical Program Director for CHR at the DOC program overseeing Cybolski and Walker. So social media is very prevalent in the lives of our teenagers' children. It plays a big role in their lives. Surveys have found that 90% of teenagers aged 13 to 17 have used social media. 75% of that have at least one active social media profile and 51% report that they actually access their social media at least once a day. So for children and teenagers, the more common ones are YouTube, Instagram or IG as they call it, Snapchat and TikTok. So it is impacting them in many ways, both children and other family members. So in children affected by their social media use, um, it can cause them to feel unconnected or disconnected, um, like they don't belong, like they're not good enough. Um, it's very important for kids to have likes and followers. And if they don't get enough of them, they just feel like they're not part of the clique. So it can be a very addictive behavior. So research has shown that adolescents or teenagers who use social media for three hours, over three hours, um, are at a higher risk of mental health in, um, situations. And some of those symptoms related to what they're finding with mental health can be sadness, um, fear, um, worries, depending on what they're actually doing and how it's actually impacting them. Social media can be, it has some benefits, right? So there is some ways to actually connect with friends and family and actually gather some information that's going on in the community. But then there's also many risks to using social media. There is the risk of, you know, being a victim um, to predators. There is the risk of being cyber bullied and harassed um, and just not feeling like you fit in, like feeling like you have to meet certain standards because it's what's being portrayed. And the reality is not everything on social media is real. A lot of it is a facade. A lot of it is what people want others to, for, to think is their life. So for parents, um, it's important that starting, depending on the age of their child, and this may vary from family to family, um, but researchers have shown that 13 is probably the appropriate age to introduce social media. And so that's even with supervision. So I would suggest that families maybe friend their, their child um, or follow their account to kind of like observe what's happening and also set some standards and restrictions. So, you know, you can't use it after a certain hour or, you know, phones can't be in your room after, you know, ready for bedtime or you can't have access to it if you don't do your homework. So if you're noticing your child separate from fun activities um, or they don't want to eat dinner at the table with you, um, they no longer want to play sports or you're seeing them like, oh, well, I want to like just be in my room. Oftentimes, you know, you find that you go in their room and they're on social media um, and parents may not even know that. So really observing the amount of time that they spend on them because there really is a lot of risky behaviors that happen there and parents don't even know about it. So I would say limiting the amount of time that they spend on it. So, um, you know, it might be 30 minutes or an hour a day um, and also taking occasional breaks. It's very healthy for our mind to have some peace and tranquility away from social media. So those would be my suggestions. So because we're seeing so much cyberbullying um, and harassing that actually takes place, um, particularly among teenagers, um, it can have some serious consequences. So first of all, it affects somebody's life in one way or the other um, and many people don't even know it you know it causes sadness um, they want to isolate they don't want to go to school they don't want to be amongst their peers um, and for those that are actually doing the cyberbullying and the harassing that really does have some legal, legal ramifications um, they can get arrested they can be suspended or expelled from school um, if they're in the same place so it's really something to think about before they proceed with those actions cyberbullying um, or negative treatment in other forms or fashions on social media can be very hurtful um, for some children. Um, for some, we don't know what else they have going on. And so that can be just added problems, um, worries that they add to their lives. And unfortunately, it can lead to suicide um, for those kids who are experiencing or thinking of that in those situations. Um, it's very important to be able to speak about it. You're not alone. There's other children actually going through that, sadly. And so there is help for you. So speak to whether it's a teacher, um, your guidance counselor, school social worker, um, talk to your parents. Um, you can also get help at a community clinic like CHR where can, they can help you navigate those symptoms and help you get better.